Good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning, um, January the 24th, 2022. I just tell you that because you might be watching this in the future, and who knows, I'll be gray-headed and old and feeble, and I can look back on this and I'll just be me. It'll be so fun, but I won't remember what day it is, so I have to remind myself. This weekend, I don't usually work on Saturdays, but I came in this Saturday and I did a demo on the new pineapple uh, trim tool. It was so much fun. I got to see gobs of people I hadn't seen for a while and all the chitter chatter out in the, uh, out in the shop was just so much fun to be involved in. So I thought since I already had it all set up, I'd just share it with my YouTubers. They've come out with a new ruler, a new pineapple ruler, and you know it's made by Creative Grid. I love the Creative Grid rulers. You know how I feel about those. And it there's three sizes now. There used to just be, well, there used to be one, then there was two, now there's three. Who knows? There could be four. I don't know. But this is the mini one, and it's my favorite because you know I love to do mini. Look at how precious that is. Let's see how big is that. That's four and a half inches. You can make it up to six inches with this ruler. But isn't that precious? Look at how it goes together. You want to make a queen size quilt out of that? Yes. Okay, let's get going. That takes some time, I'll tell you what. Then, <laughs> this was the first ruler, just the simple uh, 10 inch, it makes all the way, it makes six, eight, and 10 inch ones, depending upon where you stop. But I like the 10 inch size, it really gives you that pineapple look. It's supposed to be replicating those leaves that come out of the top of the pineapple. So that's kind of what it's giving you, you know, and it's kind of a um, tessellation because if you look at it this way, it's the pineapple, and if you look at it that way, it's the pineapple. So it's kind of really cool. And then you can change up the design by making the corners different. See, these corners are all the same. And then these corners are two different ones. And then this is the new 12. It's called the Skinny Pineapple Ruler. It makes up to a 12-inch block. I love it so much. Look at how the... Uh, the leaves or whatever you want to call this the topper to the pineapple are really skinny and long because see how these uh little uh strips are much skinnier than the ones over here on this one these are cut one and five eighths these are cut one and a half and when i move them together see how that's gonna make a a secondary block right there. It's just going to extend out that pattern. Very nice and scrappy. I chose green for the background because that's my favorite color, but it would have looked good with the pink or red or even white, you know, anything that you wanted to put in. But it's important when you make this block that you do use something that contrasts between the two sections. This section needs to be very different than this section. Look at this one over here. You can see the pineapple really doesn't stand out all that well because these are too close together in value, okay? And the bigger prints don't work on smaller pieces. You need to use some smaller prints. So I did this one just for, it was some stuff I had, fat quarters I had that weren't gonna work in my other one. So I just made it up so that I could demonstrate how it looks you know, when you do that, when you make them too close to, to each other, they don't really stand out. And then this one down here, I could bring it over a little bit, I guess. Let me unpin it and bring it over here so you can really get a good look at it. I had fun with my uh, fabric choices here. I made all the corners black but look what I did with my uh, light value. I went from light, medium, to dark. I thought that was kind of fun. I started out real light in the center and I got dark and then dark to light again. And that's just the way the fabric was in the, uh, 
in the quarter in the fat quarter bundle that I had. And uh, speaking of that, this is my uh, organization here for when I, I am going to make a queen size quilt, a king size, excuse me, king size quilt out of my 30s reproduction. So I bought a big fat quarter bundle and I chopped it up into one and a half inch strips. And of course, you know what I used to do that with was my wonderful stripology ruler. You know how much I love this ruler. And I just laid my fabrics down underneath me. Let me get a strip here that I was working on. Get me a strip of fabric here. I fold it so it fits into the diameter of my, uh, into the belly or the middle or however you want to say it, of my piece, of my uh, ruler, I mean. Turn it around. Now here's a zero. And to straighten the edge, I just put that over a little bit so that when I can straighten the edge. And then I have to somehow have a straight edge to line up. So I'm going to use that fold as my straight edge. I'm going to use my rotary cutter. I'll straighten the edge here. I'm going to move that down just a hair. And then I'm going to cut my one and a half. Now all I have to do is look at the stars. Every star is one and a half. See the stars here that I'm looking at? I don't even have to think what's one and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half. I just go along those stars, lickety split, and voila, look what I have. Spaghetti. Strips. One and or a fettuccine. half. Fettuccine. Perfect. Yeah, fettuccine because it's a little bit wider. Uh, the On this one, it'd be spaghetti. Uh, but anyway... You know, how fast was that? And then I just cut them into whatever lengths I need. But that was really quick. I think I've mentioned it, but I cut the entire background in 20 minutes for this quilt. That was super duper fun. Um, and then, let's see, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, in the ruler comes the instructions and they're very detailed. They tell you what size to cut your strips, how to subcut them, what size to cut the middle, what size to cut the corners, everything. And it gives you every single step it shows you. But I'm gonna show you here today because some people are more visual and they don't like to look at the paper. They wanna see an actual person do it. And it just so happens I'm an actual person. Isn't that amazing? So I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? I've been practicing. This is my step one. You start out with a square. And again, it tells you what size square, okay? For the um, skinny one, my squares are littler. Then I'm making, I'm gonna show you this one because that's what I got set up. I'm gonna start out by sewing my first round. Now, number one is odd, right? So these are my odds. My background color is my odds. And my evens are gonna be my colors, okay? And when I look at the ruler, it's got a pointed end and a flat end. The flat end is for the odds, and the pointed end is for the evens. Now, you might want to, when you start out and you get, it is a little confusing, you might want to get a little sticker and put even and odd. And that'll just remind you, when you're trimming odd pieces, you're going to trim from this flat side. When you're trimming the colored pieces or the even pieces, you're going to use the pointed side. So if you had a little sticker to remind you, then you wouldn't have to think at all. That would be just awesome for me. <laughs> I'll tell you what. So anyway, I'm going to start out, and I've got my square, and I've sewed my two pieces on. And you know how I love to press open. You know, I'm a presser opener. I use my clapper. Speaking of clappers, we got the 10-inch clappers in. We've still got some. We're still waiting on the big ones, but the 10-inch ones are in. After I press those away from the, uh, away from the center, 
I'm going to add the other two and then press them. Now, this is the reason I cannot press open. Because if I pressed this seam open, look, if that got off a little bit, see how that's not straight? Then my block's going to be crooked. See that? And there's nothing to help me unless I use that one... Um, that fold over ruler that I use, but boy, that's a lot of, that's that's just too much. I just can't deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and iron those out towards the blocks. I mean, towards the strips. I'm gonna take my ruler and it tells me exactly what to do. Look at all these lines. They're a little confusing. It's like a landing strip. Woohoo! My goodness, there are a lot of lines to look at. But look down here, Peter. This one right here says centering square round one. And that's for this square right here. Okay, can you see it? Uh -huh. Centering square round one, and that's inside this white square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to just line that square up with my seam seams that I've made in my center square and I'm going to trim and then I'm going to pick it up I'm going to turn it and I'm going to trim it I'm going to trim all four sides and when I do that this is what I'm going to get see if I trimmed that off I get this that's kind of a square in a square right right on point yeah so that's step one now step two I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to sew two pieces on, press, I'm going to sew two more pieces on, press. What do you get? And you get this. Ooh. Step two. See? Here's step one, here's step two. So I've gotten out of my even bucket. So evens, odds and evens, this is odd, this is even, and it says right here, Centering square round two. Oh, let me get it. Let me let me okay. get it on that. Centering square round two. And it's inside this dotted black line. So I'm gonna do just what I did before. I'm gonna line that up. But nope, don't go away, Peter. Come oh, on okay. back in. I'm back, I'm back. Okay. See these dotted white lines? Uh -huh. They help me from getting a skew. They help me say straight with my seam lines. See that? I'm going to use those every single time to keep my block perfectly square. So at the end of the, of the rounds, my block has stayed perfectly square. So I'm going, to, I'm going to trim those off. I'm going to pick it up, turn it around, trim it again, and look, that's what I'm going to get. Step round two. Now, I'm glad you stayed with me this long. Don't, how many, how don't many rounds, turn me off. How many rounds do we go? Well, if you want the 10-inch size, that's this size, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rounds. 8 rounds. But if you want to stop at this size, you know, you can stop at any point. Very cool. Once you start making the pineapples. Oh, you can make it any size. Yeah, well, from Up 6 two. to 8, 6, 8, and 10 on this one. Nice. Yeah. So then, round three, now that's the trickiest round of all. All right, I'm going to show you why. So I've taken round two. That's my even. Now I'm getting ready to put on my odd. So I'm back over here into my odd bucket. So is odd background? Odd is my background. My three. The light color. Uh-huh. Three. Three is an odd number, so I've gotten my strips out of here. I've sewed one on each side, pressed, sewed another one on each side, pressed, and now I have this wackiness. Up until now, I have a square in a square in a square. So you can see I have a point there and I have a point there. But now we're going to start cutting the points off because look at the pattern. See how you have a point there, but now you're starting to get a blunt in, a blunt in, a blunt in. See that? You're, uh -huh. you're going to chop those uh, points off. Oh, that kind of sounds fun because sometimes your points don't turn out to be points anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you would think you're going to go back to your flat side that you're going to use for all your e odds. This is the odd end. 
And you would think that you would center that with the center block. Well, if you do that, you're going to cut off all the things you just sewed on. Rut row. That's not going to work. So, there's a line right here. It's a white line. And when I lay my ruler down, sometimes all those lines are kind of confusing. That's when I use my sticky uh, arrows. You know how much I use these sticky arrows. I love these things. They are so awesome because when you set your ruler down, your eye goes right to those arrows. There's no thinking about it. It just is an automatic thing. So on round three and every odd round after this, I just did a hand gesture. I don't know if you got that. But every round after this is going to use that line. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put that line on my seam line. And then I'm going to use those dotted white lines, kind of like a runway, on these. Um, these are vertical. That's horizontal. So now, <clears throat> see how I've got that on a seam line? These are on a seam line, and that shows me right there that I've got it right. So I'm going to, and I'm going to do that to all four sides, and this is what I'm going to get. Now you can see I'm starting to cut those off. Those points are going to start... Cut, be cutting off. So then I take round four. This was my round three. Sew two on, press, sew two on, press. Go back to my pointed side because I'm uneven now. I'm on four. And are we still pressing it uh, out? Yeah, we are always going to press out. Okay. Always. <laughs> We're not going to stop pressing out. But now I'm going to go back and here it says centering square round four. See that round four. So I'm going to line that up. Now look what I've got. I've got these lines here. See that line there? Uh -huh. And this line over here? Uh -huh. And my runway lines and my center line. I have all those lines to keep me square. Because the biggest thing that happens when you make the pineapple square is it gets mm. off. You know, wonky and then it pineapple. starts walk, yeah, being wonky. So I'm going to whoosh, whoosh, turn it around, cut it again, and this is what I'm going to get. Isn't Perfect. that awesome? A happy little coaster. Isn't that fun? Now you can see, look at how my points are starting to come off. And I'm starting to form that pineapple uh, look. Now when I get to step five, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm back to being odd again. So I'm over here on this side of my ruler, but look what happened. My strips are now far apart. They don't meet here in the corners. So now I can sew all four on before I have to press. So it's going to go faster. And let me tell you, I don't make these one at a time. I'm strip piecing these. Okay, so when I'm sewing this one on, I'm sewing it on to four or five or six blocks at a time. I oh. usually like to make, if I'm, if I'm making a big one, I make four at a time. Uh -huh. That way I can feel like I'm having some success. You know, if I'm trying to make all 12 or 16, it gets very, you know, weary because you're not seeing any progress. You're not seeing your whole block. So I like to make about four at a time, and I can do four in a day. It takes me about an hour to do this one of these. Now it takes me about, I don't know, 30 minutes to do one of those because the seams are shorter. But anyway, getting back to this one, I can sew all four rounds on before I have to press, before I... Okay, so before, to clarify, up to this point before we were sewing how many and pressing? Two on two, opposite sides two press. Two at a time and press. And then two at a time and, and press because press. they okay. overlapped. I gotcha. See how they... That's right. They were they overlapping. overlapping. They so were you overlapping. can't. Yeah, you cannot do that. So you're doing opposites. <coughs> opposites. Okay. Uh huh. Excellent. Nice. So now I'm on my flat side of my ruler. But am I going to go with the center again? No. I'm using this line. Remember. And now I have all these lines to look at to keep me square. And then I just trim. And I just keep doing that round after round. Okay, when I get to round my last round, 
which in this instance is round eight. So that's an even round. So I use this side. It's got my uh, center on it here. I've trimmed it. This is what I get when I trim it. <clears throat> it's time to put the corners on because it's not a square. See, and it's got to turn into a square. So, well, it doesn't have to, I suppose. You could applique that onto something. Don't you think? That'd be pretty <clears throat> to leave it just like that. But I want to make it into a square. <clears throat> so I have to sew these corners on. And it tells me in the, in the instructions to cut a square and then to cut it on the diagonal so I get triangles. Okay? But <clears throat> if you examine this, up until now we've been cutting off the excess. All these strips have been oversized for accuracy. And that's really nice. But when you get to the very end, see how this strip is way bigger than this? Even though this one has another quarter of an inch to take off. If I took off a quarter of an inch, see how it would still be bigger? All right. So what I have to do now is I have to trim this edge. So I'm going to go back to this line. And I'm going to line it up, even though this is an even uh, strip, I'm going to use the odd size. This would be the only time at the very end that I would do that. Before putting on the Before triangles. putting on the last uh, corner piece. So then I'm going to cut that off, and that's going to give me, then that's going to give me the right size when I use my seam allowance. See that? Mm. Okay, so let's pretend I have my corner on, and it's oversized. It's big too, so okay. it's gonna it's gonna be like this. Oh, let me uh, here. <clears throat> let me use this piece of paper. It's gonna be a corner that's gonna look like that. It's gonna be hanging over, and it's gonna be much bigger than it needs to be. So in order to square the whole thing up, you know how I am about squaring up. I can use my same ruler. I just take it in here, and I put this side and this side on the ruler, and now I can square up each corner. And that gives me this block right here. See how this becomes that? Nice. Isn't that nice? Nice. Now let's go over to the sew machine for a minute and uh, uh, do a couple little things because I've got a couple little tips I'd like to give you. So when I'm sewing these, I have these right here with me. However it fits on your table. And I'd have a little cutting mat right here. Let me get myself a little cutting mat. The baby, the baby cutting mat. Yeah, I'd have a bigger one. Oh, it's a little mouse pad. It's a little baby one, but I, I, I'd have pad. a bigger one usually. I like that cute. Yeah, in the cute. Yeah, I like using them as mouse pads. So I've already sewn on each side, and it's so tempting to sew, to press those open, but I'm not going to. Now, so when I'm at home sewing, oh, I usually have my shoes off. Oh, you gotta take the shoes gotta off. Take the shoes off. <laughs> Oh You'll be gosh. ripping out seams if you sew with know, your shoes on. I know, that's exactly right. You are exactly right. I don't know what it is about me, but that is exactly right. Okay, so I've got my little cutting station here. I've got my strips, and I've got my uh, extra little pad. Oh, and if you uh, came in and got one of these, and we were out of them because I think we only might have had one the day I showed this, but now we have a bunch of these, these personal size wool mats. They're the bee's knees. I love mine. And I just sit it right here, and I got my little iron, and I'm all set and ready to go. I can be the lazy quilter. Maybe I'll rename it instead of me. The lazy the quilter. <laughs> I will rename it and be the lazy quilter. How about that? I love it. Yeah, so I don't even have to get but up. But wait, you're not lazy, though. I'm not too lazy. Because though. I think when you strive for accuracy, yeah. that takes a lot of intent. That takes intent. a lot of, uh -huh, it does. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So now I've sewn two pieces on. Now I can't go and sew this on without pressing because they overlap. 
So I'm going to come to my iron. I'm going to set my seam because I'm not pressing open. And I'm going to press one to one side and press the other one to the other side. Now I can sew the other one on. And it's important that you get it in the center. Well, am I gonna fold and fold? No, that's gonna take too much time. And am I gonna pin? No, because I found a tricky way. Tricky. See right here. A there's, tricky way. Yeah. There's the seam allowance. I'm just gonna match that up with the seam allowance. I'm gonna match this that one up tricky. with the seam allowance. And I'm gonna sew with the seams up. Oh, look at you. You you would think you would sew like this, but no. Because can I can just flip it, and now I can keep control. Dang. And I'm not going to start sewing clear back here. There's nothing to sew back there. Let me get my needle up here. I'm going to just start sewing right where that seam is. That's tricky. So I'm not wasting a bunch of thread by sewing uh, more than I have to. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> so now, look, I've just sewn that on. Okay, now I'm going to put the other side on, and I'm going to sew with the seams up. Well, this is definitely worth the price of admission right Isn't here. Isn't it? Right here. This is it. Yeah. Because this doesn't, it doesn't tell you this in the instructions. No. It tells you everything else they I've don't, told you. Well, they don't want to give everything away. Well, they have to leave something for yeah. us. They have to leave something teachers, for us to figure out. For us teachers to figure out. So, I'm not going to pin. I know you, you guys are freaking out that I'm not going to pin, but I don't have to because I'm in control of the seams now that they're upward. So, I'm going to put that. So, now you can see that I have that. And now I'm going to come over and press, set my seam. I'm going to press. I think I don't have my rotary cutter. Forgot to bring over oh, here my rotary it is. cutter. Will this one work? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, Peter got me my rotary cutter. So now, I'm just gonna take this, take my ruler. Oh, this is the wrong ruler. Oh shoot, I brought the wrong ruler. What ruler did you bring? Oh, I didn't bring the skinny one. This is the one for the other one. So I forgot my skinny ruler. Well, you know what I, what's next. Yeah, I just, we know what's next. You know what's next. So all I wanted to show you was that trick of sewing it with the seams up. Nice. That's the very good tip, okay? Because as you go out and you go out and you go out, you want to keep this as your straight line. If you were to put a piece on, and as you sewed, it got just an itty-bitty bit cockeyed, like, can you see that there's a little bit of that uh -huh. cockeyed out there? Cockamania. You would stay straight with your cut edge, all right? And because this is oversized, when you flipped it, you'd be cutting it. And it won't get that wonky, but don't, don't make a habit of doing that because it will get a little bit wavy. It won't get wonky, but it'll get wavy. It won't lay as flat. So try your best to keep it straight. But this is the sewing line right here. That's where you want your quarter inch to be away from, right there. So that's why it's important to be organized. And it just goes fast. Now, when I am done, you know, let's say I only had 15 minutes to sew maybe 15 extra minutes before I got, went to work or 15 minutes while I'm waiting for the oven to heat up or something like that. I'm all organized. All I have to do, I'm all right here, you know? And it, it it's nothing that I don't... I mean, I, I feel bad for those people who don't have a sewing room that they can just leave set up all the time. But if you don't have that kind of a sewing room, look, all you have to do is go like this, 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 turn your machine off and put this away and you're all cleaned up and all it takes is to get this one little thing out and you're ready and to go And your iron, again. your iron can your fit in there fit if you right didn't want to leave it out. Right, exactly. And your ruler. And I mean, you know, it's all compact. 
I love a project that's like that. I do my log cabins this way, too. Okay, Dawn, say that all you had was this tiny little bed right uh -huh. here, right? Where right. your sewing machine sits on. Uh-huh. Like, and you didn't have this wing. You could use one of those microwave tables. Fold, or a TV tray. What are those tray? called? The TV tray. Yeah, the, the fold-out TV yeah, tray. TV tray, something like that. Anything that would just help you, you know, have a little more space. But if it... it and the more portable it is, the better off you Don't are. Don't TV trays come in a set of four? Yeah. They so you do. could have one, one on, on each yeah, side. Yeah. And, and one in behind if you need it. Yeah. You can have it here too. But, you know, lots of people sew on their kitchen. I had a friend who she sewed in her bathroom because that's where the best lighting was. So she would sew on her vanity. Now, I just thought that was the funniest thing. That is the funniest thing. And then thing. I had one girlfriend who she lived in a house. And they had a piano in their bathroom. Oh, geez. Because it was one of those old, old houses that didn't have an indoor toilet. And when they put in an indoor toilet, they used one of the bedrooms. So it was big. You know, it was a big bathroom. So they had the play, the, the big piano right there in the bathroom. So you could get, you could sing in the shower and be accompanied by your sister. <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest story. I love That's it. That's good old Sarah. I, I just really miss her. Oh. Uh, she was at Needle in the Haystack when I uh, worked there. So she's still around. She's still sewing. She's she's pretty good gal. So anyway, I hope that you make some pineapple blocks. They're very impressive. Your friends will all think that you sewed all those diagonal seams when you really didn't. Don't tell them that you've got a secret tool, secret weapon. Don't tell them. Okay, we've got some still in stock. Uh, we had a really good day Saturday. We sold a lot of Stripology rulers. If you uh, want one, we're getting low on them, so make sure you come in and get one. And uh, you know what? Just for today, I think, just for today, I'm going to say if you come in within the next month, the whole month of February, and you want to buy a pineapple ruler or a Stripology ruler, we're going to give you 10% off. Okay, Ooh. an extra 10% off. Stripology rulers or pineapple rulers. So if you want a pineapple ruler, you have to choose which one you want. The regular one, which is the one I demonstrated. The mini one, which is my favorite. And then the luscious, luscious new one that's becoming my favorite is this one right here. And it's the skinny. It's called the skinny. And inside of it comes this little booklet, and it tells you everything. Or all you have to do is push the YouTube button, and here I'll be. So, have fun this week. Talk to you later. Bye.